Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is David Palmer, Leo King, and Rich Lop here for the Awakening Experience. Today, we'll be doing the Hermit card, and I swear we're not late because of the crypto pump right now. It's more like problems with tech. What's going on? <laughs> what's up, man? <laughs> yeah, this is a very good card. We've been feeling it, oh, man, all day, last night. I mean, at first, I was just thinking it was just me. I didn't sleep all night last night. Every time I'd, I'd start to doze off, I'd wake up all night and then had to take a nap today. And my wife has been feeling really heavy, heavily energetically bogged down. And, and I'm like, man, what is going on? And now I'm just noticing that everybody is kind of like on edge all day. And I'm like, dude, I, I told Lee, I was like, I'm going to ask David what's going on with the astrology. You know, I, and it's... Not a better time to, to pick this card right here because I think this is these kind of times right now is when you need because this this card, the hermit, the thing about the hermit is some people take it the wrong way and they, they look at it like he's isolated away from the world. And that's not the way I interpret true hermit energy. It's like knowing when to separate yourself and go take some alone time, some me time so that you can gather your thoughts and get your vibe right, you know. Yeah. So if, if there's anybody out there that's just tripping and falling all, all over themselves right now, yeah, this is mandatory from time to time. You got to be able to assign yourself some me time or you'll go fucking crazy, you know? Yeah. I also think it's an interesting card because is he just sitting on snow or is that snow packed top of the mountain? It's, it's one of those cards where he's standing up straight too and he's leaning in to the light, which is guiding him. And it's one of the only cards where everybody's guided by something where this is the ether. There's really five elements. The ether really is the spiritual true element. And so to me, it's like that it's, it's beyond the tarot. It's the card where he's following nothing from the tarot, except the ether, the, what gives the power to everything in life, the tarot to the divine power that there really is. And I think it's, He's, of course, got a beard. He's been through a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because it's the most like bland card, right? Everybody else, <laughs> even if it's bad or emotions or seven of swords, there's still a lot of color. It's, so, it's more like he's disconnected from the physical. He's, this is the only guy who's really escaped the fucking matrix, really, yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that, that reminds me. That, that's actually something that I learned in the Mind Mastery School that I attended. It was never, the person teaching it didn't ever attribute it to the tarot or anything like that. But I can remember very vividly thinking that when I was learning the tarot, that, that I learned that a big part of the manifestation path is to know when to go isolate yourself. Because every now and then, because especially once you start, once big things start happening, you get on that manifestation path and big things start popping off. It's really easy to get distracted. Now, now, now you've manifested all these results in your life. The business is popping off. The money's coming in. You know, you got new relationships and it's really easy to get all wrapped up and lost and distracted. And then you fall off the manifestation path. Things start going bad. Problems start happening and knowing when to, to kind of, Take yourself away and go just say, I got to go do me for a little bit. So many people are so afraid to do that, especially in the age of service to others. People think that I can't take me time. That makes me a bad person. I'm like, no, if you, if you want to be of service to others, you, you are required to be of service to yourself because the, the example I always use, this is a silly analogy, but if you could imagine a hospital they have a, f a fleet of ambulances. Hmm. And if you never take those ambulances into the mechanic shop, get a tune up, get the tires rotated, new plugs, new wires, fuel filter, eventually somebody's going to die because somebody's going to be having a heart attack. And that, that the mechanics of that ambulance was never put as a top priority. And it's going to break down on the side of the road one day. And it's the same thing, especially for us light workers. Same thing. We can run ourselves into the ground trying to be of service to everyone. And if you're not careful, you'll deplete yourself completely dry and eventually be of service to no one. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I feel that when we're following a lot of the problems that we have in our life, they're always physical matrix shit. And yeah. when we get to that me time that you're talking about, it's 
that one-on-one -on -one with the universe, but it's also wisdom. You know, this is the card of that wisdom that comes. The older you get, you just stop worrying about cer certain things, right? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this is a card where it's like, okay, let's look at the wisdom. It's also the card of elders too. Like sometimes you need to call somebody. Sometimes that me time is like, let me call for help to somebody who might have more wisdom in this area. So instead of me freaking out, you know, it's a, a card where we have to check in and I love the mechanic aspect of it. You got to maintenance yourself just the same way you do a car. But I feel like it's like those really crazy moments where it's like the mechanics looking at you like, I can't fix it. Mm -hmm. And you, you were expecting them to. It goes to that place to where there's no losing your cool either and going anywhere. You know, it's, if anything, it's accepting the cold like he does in this card. He's accepting mm -hmm. where he's, out of the it's kind of weird he's out of the matrix too like there, there, it's not like there's a bunch of things going off it's not like there's strippers or anything or <laughs> it's not like there's anything in front of him to get him he has to also be self-motivated to actually get out of the cave because there's that element of the hermit in the cave there's a merlin aspect to this card too and and and, and merlin you never really see him he's not having to convince you of things like you know he's doing things behind the scenes and i feel like you know, being spiritual isn't a show. This is the card where it's not a show. It's it's really the work that you do within yourself and the mm -hmm. mastery that you that you really have to do. And it's it's a it's a hard card because you know I think it's the card of mastery of life is following the divine fully and checking mm -hmm. in on everything that you're reacting to and everything that you're going through and being like, am I being wise in this moment? It's easy for us to get so caught up in our own way. Yeah, where he's leaning in. It's like he's literally leaning in to the divine in the light that's guiding him while his back is up straight. So he's not slouched over, upset. He's not, you know, really, there's, it, there's not a lot of movement in this card, but it's the posturing. It's the, no matter what's happening or how hard it was to get to this wise energy or how long it took, especially because he's old, he still got it. You know, it's like that, that person that's like, I still got it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's a card that reminds you the ultimate mastery is to say, I still have got my life, no matter how crazy it might look or how crazy things go in our ego, no matter what, we've got it. Yeah, and, and I, I think another big part of the wisdom aspect of it is when we start to realize just how pointless some of the things that we worry about are. It reminds me of uh, a, a video I was listening to where a lady was sharing her near-death experience and you know how a lot of people report when they have an NDE that they're able to see and hear and understand the thoughts and the feelings of everybody because we're all connected. And they, they feel that connected energy to everything and everyone when they're on the other side. And this lady said, one of the, she said, one of the things that I saw was that every single human was so worried about what everybody thought about them. Every time I would focus in on somebody, their number one concern was what's everybody thinking about me? What's everybody thinking about me? But the funny thing is, everybody was thinking the same thing. So nobody was focused on anybody. They were all just worried, what's everybody thinking about me? You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and that's one of those things that once we get to a certain age, we start realizing nobody's paying attention to me like that anyways. Right. Like, I think that's one of the things that I started learning when I creeped up into my thirties and our twenties where I'm, man, what's everybody think about me? I hope, do I look good enough? Am, am I, am I, do I sound good enough? Am I saying something stupid? And then when I turned about maybe 31, 32, I started realizing people aren't paying that much attention to me. Everybody's worried about what everybody thinks about them, you know? Right. So. Well, and I, I think that's the, the older you get, but also the, the, the real motherfuckers i'll just say out there that are mentors or people that really can be of wisdom to others they're not worried about the advice they give they're not worried about anything because it's coming from a divine place in themselves right at the end of the day there is that truth that that really is not concerned with looks right like truth doesn't have a concern of how it comes across or it looks it just is so it's that energy of really owning of what is and also remembering that no matter what we define and especially manifestation, right, of a problem in life, it's like it's always the, the boomerang back to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the hermit is the first one, I think the only one that realizes that it's the ninth card. It's the card that 
you know, all the others don't. They're looking at it from these these big successes or like what they what they can have or what they're going to manifest. Where it's like he's realizing what has manifested in the lessons that have been learned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and if anybody, if I were to put betting money, if it was in Vegas, I'd say who'd be the one to make it through the craziest splitting of the earth i'd say the hermit over the emperor or over the empress or even over the hierophant or over yeah. right if i just started going down even the chariot which i love there's a part where he's above all that and going and, and watching down from the top of the mountain it's a very capricorn card so it's it, it's a card that you know my dad always used to say youth and enthusiasm will never outdo age and treachery Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, it's just the the wisdom that comes from it, man. And like you were saying on the manifestation path, the he's he, that that energy is where you realize that on a manifestation path, or even just an evolutionary path, a spiritual path, it's not about the things that you get. The things that you get are the byproduct. The, right. The most important part is the person you become. And if you listen to just about anybody who actually really is teaching that message, they all give some rendition of the same thing. It's about becoming a different person. It's about looking at things differently. It's about viewing the world differently. And like how Dr. Joe Dispenza says that everybody always wants to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and, it, and you can't. You literally have to become someone else. And that's what that Hermit energy is all about, becoming a different person. Yeah. And once you do that, you attract different things as a result, you know? Yeah, because I feel like, you know, it also begins to really look at like everything of what's being attracted is not so much of what he's hoping for or wishing for, but what what's the stuff of like, no matter whether he feels like it was his fault or not, he's like, I attracted it and I've gained all this wisdom. Yeah. And all I have left is to follow a divine course, a divine light in front of me. There's nothing left to really manifest except for just, following the light you know mm -hmm. we always hear follow the light or follow the divine or follow the essence of the divine that's that's all he's doing at the point like and he's realizing at the end of the day like every struggle and every challenge really has brought him to this place where he doesn't even care about the color of his clothes he doesn't care about whether he's seen or not he doesn't care all he cares about is the light that's pushing him forward and i you know i think that it's the, that card where you you don't like to get it in a tarot reading usually it's like oh man mm -hmm what's the big lesson or what is things so slow about? Mm -hmm. We did the hangman recently and a lot of people look at that as such a slow moment, but they're very common. Mm -hmm. You know, of course they're both different positions, but they're both in very looking at the illumination, but it's, it's interesting that it's the illumination in the head of the hangman, although it's the illumination that's actually being followed. So that it's not as slow. It's actually yeah. following it where it's like, Oh, you're just getting it now, hangman. You know, like mm -hmm. I feel like Hermit's like, I've already got it. I'm already walking towards it. Mm -hmm. And that's all that it's put its life to is following the light now. There's everything is being checked. Is this from the light? Is this from the light? No matter what, or how triggering. It's a card where no triggers can trigger him, no words could disturb him, no frustrations can get to him. Mm -hmm. Like there's zero that could get him down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like in these times, we all have to do that. It's, it's, I think, more than a check. We all have to be fucking like, this ain't a game as much as we might have thought it was anymore. I think it's been up until this point. Mm -hmm. But it's not a game anymore. And it's like, yo, like everything that's happening, you can't keep putting it on the outside world or it's so cold or why am I up here? Or, what, what's happening? Or why is this person saying that? Or why is that happening to me? You can't put any blame anywhere. The hermit's like, <laughs> the only blame is I'm not following the light if there's a problem. Yeah, this, this card comes up for me very frequently when people are fresh out of relationships. And I don't think they like to hear that. Uh, As most people, they get, you know, uh, I've never been able to wrap my mind around. I've never been that type who could get like, I'm in a committed relationship that comes to an end and then jump straight into a new relationship. I've never understood that. But so many people ask me, they'll ask me two questions. Is the past person coming back? If not, is anyone new coming in? It's like, whoa, hold up. What? What? How are you even thinking about a new person if 
you're still in love with the past person. If you're in love with somebody, how are you even thinking about anybody else? I've never been able to wrap my mind around that. And usually this card comes out mm. very frequently and people don't like that. Nobody likes to hear that you need to do some healing. That's like when, when somebody's heartbroken, that's, that's like a curse word. Healing. No, I don't want to spend no time by myself. I don't want to sit and marinate in this. I don't want to process this energy. I don't want to sit with this. I don't want to feel this. I want to jump straight into a new relationship so that somebody can distract me from my pain. I, I hear that so frequently, you know? Well, it's like fishing. I mean, I think it was funny that they used to have like plenty of fish was like a dating app. Yeah. But it's like, okay, if you're in a relationship, you, you fish for it, you troll, you get a bite, then, oh, it's a relationship, you brought the fish in the boat. And then I guess something happens to where both parties caught each other in each other's boats and throw the fish out. And it's like, okay, there's still remnants, there's still the, the smell, the blood, <laughs> all the stuff on the boat, right? And so using your, what, what people say is like, who, where's the next one coming in? It's like, well, okay, now you got to go cast a new line is the line okay? Did you, you know, I get a new hook, you got to get new things. Yeah. And then are you, are you sure you still want to be fishing on a boat right now? Like, isn't there a whole other universe still going on? Yeah. That, you know, so people get in that cycle, right? Of just like, oh, I, somebody's out who's now in. And it's like, okay, yeah. I guess you're just going to stay in the fishing boat. Yeah. And just keep fishing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then, it, you know, energetically, I saw you did a video just on your Facebook the other day. It was really great because you said like if you get into a relationship with somebody who ain't over somebody, they're bringing that energy in. Yeah. Oh, I did say right? that, didn't I? Yeah. Right. So it's like it reminds me of like okay, if you if you're in a relationship, the smell of the fish ain't going away. Yeah. In a day. Yeah. Like people want it to go. Like <laughs> up, I energetically broke up on text message, so I'm clear. It's like that fishy smells all over your iPhone. It's all over the fucking everywhere and people don't realize that it takes time and energy and that's the other part about the hermit right it's like what's the wisdom you learned of it mm -hmm. so you can people think it's cutting cords it's sending the energy of i am grateful for the lessons that you taught yes. me and i understand the shit that i had to learn from it and there is no cut yeah man it's you... about keeping that cord as a divinely loving cord because <laughs> it, you know but that's a trigger for people right away. Oh, yeah, Cause that, yeah, the people who do, say, Oh, I just cut myself from everyone. I think those are the most fucked up people in the world. That's stupid. I hear that shit all the time. Cause somebody came to me for a reading about a week or two ago that said something like, uh, it was something to the effect of this person's energy is still all over me, even though I did a cord cutting ritual. And I'm like, that is a crock of horse shit. You don't just say a little affirmation and and rub a crystal on your face and and detach from this person energetically. It just doesn't work that way. No, the fish is still on the crystal. Yeah, and these and these <laughs> fucking stupid ass people on the on the internet that give all these dumb bullshit spiritual teachings are leading people down the wrong path. Energy has to be processed and transmuted. Yeah. You don't just say a little affirmation and oh the cord's cut. No, the fuck it's not. Healing does not mean let go, move on, and forget about it. That's not healing. If I strap a 100-pound rucksack to your back and lock it on there, eventually you'll forget that it's there at some point. Could take a year, could take two years, but eventually you'll forget the damn thing's there. Don't mean it ain't there just because you've forgotten about it. People think that all I, all I got to do is just move on, let go, and forget about it. Once something is broken, it never goes back to its original dimensions. Whenever, whenever you go through some kind of experience, especially something painful or something hurtful, you're never going to go back to who you were before it happened. And that's no. the whole point. That's why we go through it. Now, whether or not that turns out to be a good thing or a bad thing is totally up to you. If you just leave the energy the way it is and, and don't do anything with it, then it's probably going to be a bad thing. It's going to traumatize you. You have to consciously take that energy and, like you said, apply it. I'm thankful for the lesson, but there's a whole process that, that comes along with that because you have to use the power of your perception to create something new with that energy and then assign it a meaning. I, I, I have to yeah. teach my clients this all the time. And most people, they get lost in the middle of the, they say they learned the lesson. That's one thing people say. Well, I learned my lesson. Okay. Well, prove it. Do something. People, you know, people, people ask me, I learned my lesson, so why do I have to keep going through this? 
It's like, if you learn the lesson, you wouldn't keep going through it. If you keep doing the same thing you've been doing, you're going to keep getting the same thing you've been getting. Yeah. You know, and that's what this hermit, you have to be able to take that time. The hermit, he's not just isolating himself until the pain goes away. He's isolating himself and he's actually taking the wisdom and processing through it, figuring out how he's going to apply that wisdom to his life. And see, he, he hasn't even done it yet. That's the thing. He's thinking about, okay, what did I learn from that? How am I going to take what I learned and use it in the future? He's yet to go out and actually use that lesson yet, but he's gathering his wisdom right now, which is what so many people are so afraid of doing because it's painful. Well, yeah, because it leaves scars. And I feel like the hermit in his isolation wears his scars. But there's also a part of him still coming out, like you said, from the isolation of like, okay, I'm going to follow this light and I'm not afraid to show all my scars either. That's kind of the, the weird part using the example of people wanting to wash away and I've learned the lesson. It's like they think that they can just go like tattoo remove yeah. their lessons off or ironically rub a crystal on them, which will probably just add to the scars mm -hmm. of the biggest scar, which is you're trying to erase the lesson. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, life is not written in pencil. <laughs> and so I think that that's the hardest part is like, you know, people try to erase their past or at least try and draw up the way that it is. And the hermit doesn't do that anymore. It's like, I'm just going to look at everything for what it really mm -hmm. is. I'm not going to create a new fantasy of what it is. And again, because if you're trying to clout people and be chasing people's opinions to make them be swayed or anything like that, you don't care, right? If mm -hmm. you really are just said the way it is, but most people are not wanting to learn the big lesson of like, oh, you're just creating the story mm -hmm. instead of really paying attention to what it was and you want to erase the scars. And then the hard part about this part is where people do go through really shitty shit. Mm -hmm. You still have to accept those scars and see what you learn from it. And I think mm -hmm. that's where it gets harder is like, you know, there are things where shit happens in life. And, and it's, I think it's worse when you're somebody who where it's like, you're taking something that's so fucking minuscule. You drop the milk, yeah, you know, or, Oh God, I, I don't have the, it's like referencing things that are really happening. The hermit's doing everything. Cause he has the highest view up at the top of the mountain. What's interesting is you think of the fool card, he, you could still see the peaks of the mountains behind him. Mm -hmm. This is the peak of the mountain. So he sees everything above, right? He can see everything. But it's interesting because it's one of those things to where it's like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that to myself anymore. I'm not going to keep creating the, the fantasy tale that I'm wanting it to be. And I'm also not going to, you know, consider that, that, oh, just I'm always the one getting the shit end of the stick in the deal. Yeah, it takes a, a, a very extreme and rare person to own fully all that's happened in life and keep going. Mm -hmm. Most people can't keep going. Yeah. So really, when you bring up people wanting somebody to come back in and make them feel better, they're not going anywhere. They're just staying in the same place. Mm -hmm. And they're more likely to keep going backwards. Mm -hmm. It's a hard card because it's one of those things to where it's like a lot of people don't want to follow the divine light. And they think that, you know, they have the light of it all. And they like to go share that with everybody without really wearing the scars and it's sad. It's because we're in, that's society today, though. Mm -hmm. Especially with everything happening right now, and it's like you know, people are people are playing victim to the tenth degree in every direction. When it's like, I thought we're a collective of people, and like anything that's happening, whatever's out of your control. So many things are out of our control. Mm -hmm. I have no control on what's going to happen in the war shit. I have no control over all these other things. So he's also give it, get, got rid of that energy of control, which I think control is the energy that causes the most pain for the hermit is he tried to control things. Cause if I were to take him and put him in a reality show right now, let's say he's 89, 90, <laughs> his eighth wife has died. His kids aren't talking to him anymore. His grandkids, he forgot their names. The booze from two years ago still wear its scars. He's got track marks, but he's still going to keep going on and he's owning and accepting it. Whereas like 
I feel like, you know, a lot of people can't even make it to this place because they think that the fairy tale endings that we all want yeah. are not likely to be that, you know, like anytime you have somebody close to you die, it's never what you expected, the mm -hmm. moment, the timing, the way. And so, you know, it's like you have to take on all these really hard, crazy things in life for the way the world works, right? It's like, well, you know, nobody wants a holy war again in these times, but is that happening? Fuck. Looks like it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it's like people, people have to really start. It's easy right now to find the scapegoat and, and go right back to the easy place, right? That makes you feel better. We have scapegoats for everything in life, you know? You can blame it on, well, it was the nicotine. It was this. It was that. It was, mm -hmm. you know, it, there's a million things you can always blame everything on. It's the card where blame don't work. All it does is going to bitch slap you <laughs> until you end up, and I see a lot of people end up, to me, this is the saddest card, though, not going to lie, because I feel like a lot of people end up in this place by themselves, alone, in their life with just a shit ton of lessons. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you know, it's like, obviously, he, he might be wise, but at the same time, he could be a crotchety old man. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, and, you know, it's like, I see a lot of crotchety people in this reality. I've done a ton of readings for crotchety people who are alone, they're older, they've never had a good relationship. And the number one way you tell, if, if you're looking at hermit, Okay, you're still learning and growing, but maybe you're a fucking late, late bloomer. Yeah. And it's like, you can just tell by how many people do you really talk to in your life? How big is your circle? Mm -hmm. How many people do you interact with? I'm not talking about social media. I'm talking about like, who could you pick up on the phone right now and call? How many are you at five? Bad. You're a hermit. Mm -hmm. Are you at 20? Oh, okay. When you get to like a thousand, it's like, well, obviously then you're a person who knows how to interact. Not everybody's a boomerang because this is a card of trust. Mm -hmm. It's the trust that, that the, the, you're being guided. And it's like, he learns at the last minute, the ninth card too. It's like in numerology, the end. Like, I feel like so many people get to the end and finally get it. Yeah. And it makes me really sad because it's like the sad card of whether it's a feminine or a masculine. I see so many lonely old ladies out there mm -hmm. because they were so, I don't trust men. I don't want to. I just, anytime, oh my God, they never dealt with whatever the scars really were that weren't about the men, but about what caused the scar of the men yeah. or men. Oh my God, every chick's fucking horrible. I can't handle it. Right. It's like, what is the fucking scar there? Mm -hmm. Like, or if it's job, I never got a job. I never did. It's like, well, you just sat there. You didn't do anything. You know, you wanted to, but you didn't really want to. It's like the, every little thing. And it's the saddest card to me because it's like a lot of people like sometimes look up to this card. But to me, I don't, I don't really look up to it. I look, I look at it as a, as a sad symbol of somebody getting it too late. Yeah, it was definitely not fun. It's it's the thing, and and yeah, you're you're exactly right. You, the way I look at it, you're gonna end up here at some point in your life, regardless. Yeah, you either make the conscious choice to do it, you know, and and ideally, if we could get more young people to understand that every now and then you got to go away for a minute, not necessarily like cut everybody out of your life, just reflect. But some people, like you were saying, they never do that. They keep, you know, going through all these shitty, horrible experiences in their life. Most people, you know what breaks my heart? Most people never change frequencies. They never change vibrations. They, they come into this world for the first seven years of your life. You're in the theta state. You're being programmed. And then once, once that wall starts to form around your subconscious mind and your, and your conscious mind starts to click in and you're making conscious decisions, that's the frequency that you're programmed to. And most people stay on that same frequency their whole life. And that's when what you were talking about, that's when you're 80 years old and you're all by yourself, you're in your last days, and then you have to reflect back on this whole lifetime full of shit and lessons and whatnot. When... I mean, if, if that's the path your higher self wanted you to take, okay, cool, no judgment, but it doesn't have to be that way. I don't care if you're 25 years old. Sometimes, if you're 25 years old, your wife just cheated on you, 
Uh, you just lost your job. Chill. Go do this for a little bit. Go, go, go fucking gather your knowledge and your wisdom and, and figure out what you learn from that. Then get back out there. And yeah, you're going to trip and fall again. It's just going to happen. This is life. <laughs> that fantasy world that you were talking about. So I don't know why in 2023, so many people still have this fantasy world in their mind that one of these days they're going to get to a point in life where there are no challenges and struggles. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a relationship that doesn't have struggles and problems. There's no such thing as, as a life that's perfect with no problems, challenges, and obstacles. People don't understand that, though. So they keep chasing and chasing and chasing that little fantasy, and they keep getting fucked over, and they keep getting stabbed in the heart, and they keep, their, they keep getting let down. Their dreams keep crashing and burning because they, they don't understand that they're looking at it from the wrong perspective. A question that I get very frequently is how come every time things start going really, really, really good, something comes along and fucks it up? I get that question a lot. And it's like, well, because your energies are imbalanced. You're trying to run straight towards the light. In this life, you get either pain first and pleasure later or pleasure first and pain later. Yeah. That's just all there is to it. So if you spend your whole life chasing, chasing pleasure, the universe is going to have to throw pain at you. Whenever you get to that point where you learn how to lean into the pain and, and do the hard shit and get the hard work done first and you lean into the pain aspect first willingly, then that's when the universe will start throwing pleasure at you, you know? Yeah. Well, because I think the problem that the hermit has is that he tried to plan. And that's what everything you just said is it's always the plan. The plan is it'll be perfect. The plan mm -hmm. is it will go right. The plan is it will be awesome. Mm -hmm. The plan is they will be this, that the job will do this, that this will do this, and nothing ever goes that way. Yeah. And I think for him, that's the horrible part is like, you bring up all these scenarios and it's always like, okay, ask yourself, why did I bring on this scenario? That's what I would think that the wisest part of the Herman is like, why did I attract this instead of looking at, right? If you take the 25 year old dude, his wife cheated, ask him like the Herman would be like, why, why did she cheat on you? I don't know. She's just a bitch. You know, it's like, Oh, Oh, well, well, let's look at what, what were you doing? Oh, are you the guy that just keeps allowing that because you let people walk all over you, mm -hmm. you know, or you just, you know, you know, you give your heart, and then they don't really like give it. So it's, it's not that it was cheated on. It was slow walking itself. That's the weird part about the hermit is like the hermit shows up in your life. Usually after you kind of see it, it was slow walking to cheating. There was a lot of the light showing you it's going to end up here, but people want to look at the old guy who's like, Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, young man. She's gonna go there this way. Here, let me show you. And it's just like, here's a year or two years. Are you listening to me? I guess not. So we all we all end up at the hermit, like you said. I all feel like we're watching the hermits in our lives mm -hmm. of all these scenarios and situations. And like, until you do something about it and take the wisdom and and find the light nine out of 10 times. The problems that we all experience in life can be handled with following the light that we're not following the light in the, in the issue. Mm -hmm. The argument is always like not in the light. Let's get to the light. The fucking problem at work. Let's get back to the light The problem in the world. Well, I'm just sitting here watching fucking half of it to more is fucking fake. I'm really giving my energy away to that. And it's just like the, across everybody's fucking phones and TVs right now over the last four and a half years has been this old fucking hermit walking. It's like, are you really listening to this person? And, and people don't pay attention to that. And that's the problem with TikTok or all these things, like all this entertainment and noise. That's the problem is, is people just, the reason why they don't get anything done in life is because they don't, take the time to actually like reflect, you know, like I get a lot of people hit me up like, man, I want to do all these badass lectures like you do. It's like, I'm like, yeah, I research nonstop. I'm, I'm reading old books. I'm doing this. I'm, 
into the old works. I'm doing history. I'm doing all that. What are you doing? Oh, you're, you're, you're flipping on TikTok all day? <laughs> yeah. Give a lecture then. Yeah. Pull the camera out and do it. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. It's like, well, okay, you, all you know what to say is, is exactly just off the things you saw off TikTok. Where's an original thought? A lot of people don't have originality. And this card, I think that's his big problem too, is he's realizing how unique and individual he really is. And it's like, I almost feel like it's like, okay, I'm going to go show that now. Sometimes it takes a long time for people to find it. Yeah, but I mean, that, that that's a problem in and of itself right there. Because if somebody says, I want to give all these cool lectures, I want to be a spiritual teacher. And you say, okay, we'll start doing it. And they say, I don't know what to say. So if you don't have anything to say, then what is it that you really want? Yeah. You don't want to give cool lectures. You don't yeah. want to teach people spiritually. You just want something to make your ego look cool. You yep. just you just want you just want to be famous. You just want to look like somebody who's who's big and important. That's not the way you go into this. You got to have something to say. Do you have something cuz man, I know my whole life and especially up into my my mid to late 20s like it just burned inside of me like a fire so you know what i would do honestly i would I, I don't know if this is me being an aquarius or what because i would fixate on having these conversations in my head and and of just trying to explain something to some fucking idiot that doesn't understand it and i would just do that in my mind so what I would do on my days off from my, my car wash job, I would go out into the woods, set my phone up on a little tripod, and I would pretend that my phone was some idiot that I'm trying to explain something to <laughs> because like so that I can verbalize it and get it out. And that's what my videos were when I very first started my YouTube channel. Like I had something to say. I wasn't trying to be a famous YouTuber. I had something to say that I felt people needed to hear you know so when when people say stuff like that it's like oh no you you don't want to be a spiritual teacher you just want to do something to puff your ego up you know yeah and it reminds me of like you know like a hot pocket like microwave like instant <laughs> i want to feel the taste of pizza but i don't want to wait for the cooking <laughs> nothing wrong against hot pockets they played a bit part in my journey to get here <laughs> but it's like it reminds me, like, if you're going to use that reference, it's like, I wanted to describe people astrology every day that it could be done every day in a collective way. It used to be called mundane astrology, but that was more geopolitical. But to be like, hey, I'm doing a horoscope for everybody. It doesn't matter what sign you are. And so when I started doing a daily with that, and the first to ever do a daily of that in a video, it was like, I got a lot of flack, but it was like, remind me of the hermit, like, it's going to take me a long time to get this to be understood. Yeah. And I feel like that's like you and I in this show. I mean, it's just like show up every week. It doesn't matter what it is. And I think that the positive part of the hermit is a commitment to the, to following the light mm -hmm. and understanding that slow growth is always better than fast instant because it drops off quick. And that's oh, yeah. the problem with, with where you get like the understandings, like the hermit card, is very much the opposite of like a quick hit of something that's going to make you feel good. You're not going to get stimulation instant fast. Mm -hmm. You're going to get the long work that's going to pay off in the end. Mm -hmm. It's the card of, you know, that really, we don't really know where he was. He could be in a Halloween costume right now. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he's doing what we all strive in our lives to be, which is to stand up tall to follow the divine and to, and to know that it, he's not somebody who just, he's not a homeless dude who was drinking on the side of the road that decided to just now follow the light. You know, it's yeah. like, there's a lot that this guy's done to teach. If we take, if I take the wisdom from Merlin teachings and if I, I look at him as Merlin, it's not like Merlin became the wizard that literally everybody thinks and the Druid and the, and the magical, you know, ways that he has just by just saying I'm Merlin today. You know, it takes a long time of, of work. It doesn't. And this is a card of long, long, your, I would call it the, the card of lifetime and multiple lifetime divine work. Mm -hmm. 
pain first and pleasure later. Yeah, and I think that's hard for people to see in this reality, though. Like, this is not a life of like, I'm going to get this and get this and get this. It's like, at the point of the Herman, it doesn't matter what it gets. It all that matters is if it finishes the job and it got the light through. Mm -hmm. It's a light bearer that it's bearing the light. It also reminds me of, you know, you could use Paul Revere, for example, and going at night to be a messenger. He's a messenger, but he's a messenger. And, and people think Paul Revere is the one, you know, the British are coming and they gave the message all across the Eastern seaboard of all 13 colonies. Well, he couldn't ride a horse in one night like that, but he had such enough power to be able to get his voice to be said all the way down the 13 colonies. There was no Morse code. There was none of that. But it was the fact that back when, right before all that happened, when we had the Boston massacre, he's the one who drew up it. He was there when the British started just killing innocent colonials. And he's the one who drew it up in the papers and drew it up and put it in. And so people listened to him when he said the British are coming and we had signed the declaration, all 13 colonies had signed off and sent that to King George. When they were coming in their ships with their soldiers, when he said it, others listened because they had seen that he was a man of his word, of his ethics. And that this card represents that. It's like people want people to listen to them. It's not about how hard you're doing it. It's about whether or not it really is part of the light mission or not. Yeah. 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 If you have something to say, the universe will make sure the people who need to hear it will hear it. And no, very frequently, you're not going to get a real quick hit. Because, I mean, everybody knows that what goes around comes around. So when, when you're doing the hard work now, you're casting those vibrations out into the universe. It's going to come back. Don't worry about that. Like, like you said about this, us doing this show. You know, the, the number one priority, at least in my mind, is being able to say that one thing. If one, if one episode of this, you or me, says one thing, that that one person needs to hear to change their life. That's why I do this. Yep. And and you know, there's no I have no expectation. No. I don't I don't, you know, come here and do this every week because I want to get something out of it. You know, I, I come here and I show up and I do this every week because it's part of the light work. And eventually, I'm sure something amazing will happen later on down the line, but whatever, that'll happen yep. when it happens. I'm not worried about that right now. It's about the work, it's about the mission. And like I said, I know I said this in the past couple of episodes, but I seriously think that the, the people who are assuming positions in the spiritual community who don't have their heart in the right place, they're not going to make it through 2024. They're not going to because it's going to come to a point to where if you're not doing it for the right reasons, you're going to fall off. Yeah, it's not a costume to be worn, a light worker. It's not uh, a cool AI image that you can make to make yourself look more spiritual, you know? <laughs> It's, it's, it, that's the hard part. I feel like too, that the trust of just doing the light work, whatever comes, comes and that it's meant to be because you're following the light. He's, he's aware of that. Somebody had mentioned if there was a correlation between this and the high priestess, which I would say there's not. No. They're masculine and feminine. The high priestess has to use the B and J yeah, towers. And, you know, She's, she also has a, a, an illusion about her where there's zero illusion about the hermit. The only illusion is somebody looking at him as if it's not understood why he's in the place that he is, where she could, she, is she from the light? Is she from the not? You don't know. With him, you see the light. Mm -hmm. With her, you don't know. It's my understanding that the masculine counterpart to the high priestess is the hierophant. Isn't that true? That's what I read. Yeah, I mean, that would be, exactly, that's, that's, that's going from the Masons to the fucking church. That's why she's got the, the B&J right next to her, and she's having to use, she's having to set up her own seance in a gridded place, right? The hermit is up on the mountain following the light, doing his druid magic, doesn't matter where he's at. You know, and I think that's the big difference. It's like she it's like reminds me of the, the 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 feminine tarot spiritual women that do their channels online that make it look so spiritual. That's the high priestess mm -hmm. to me. It's like, mm -hmm. what's the real illusion going on here? <laughs> you know, it's how she looks. It's like it reminds me of like 
uh, you know, Chloe, you know, like looking for tarot, Miss Chloe, you know, like fuck, like like it's got to look a certain way, and let me show how good that it looks, Miss Cleo. Or? Yeah, Miss. Oh like, yeah, back in the day, yeah. like that. That high priestess to me is that. It's like you might get some interesting, you know, you're gonna get some good tidbits, but mm -hmm. you follow all of it when she goes, send me forty five thousand dollars. <laughs> And I wash away. All, I know that there's some voodoo dolls. They're playing with voodoo dolls with you down at the war right now. Pay me forty five thousand dollars, and I'll make sure the voodoo stops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where the hermit and the high priestess are completely different. Yeah, yeah, and that that has got to fucking go, man. I see that. Do you ever see that? Uh, uh, like in your comment section. Like so every time I go to one of my comment sections, whether it's on the Facebook page or on my YouTube channel, I'll see somebody that goes around and responds to everybody's comment saying, you know, it'll tell this big story of how, oh, me and my husband divorced last year and I called Dr. Sheba. And oh, I know. Dr. <laughs> Sheba uh, did a magic spell that made my love, my life partner come into my life. Contact Dr. Sheba. With at fortune this. teller emoji. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and star. <laughs> yeah. And that, that we have got to break that mentality when it comes to the spiritual community. We have to get out of this mentality that there's this magical switch you can flip. Or there's this magical crystal that's going to make everything all better. Or that there's just a magical affirmation that you can say or a ceremony and it's gonna and no man no we gotta we gotta get out of that mentality everybody's looking for an easy switch everybody wants the quick hit easy switch and they don't understand anything about universal law frequency equalization they don't understand anything about any of that and that's the reason why we come here to planet earth is to learn how to manipulate energy in a good way not not in a bad way but in a good way and it's still so clouded up with all this bullshit and entertainment. And there's so many people who still just don't understand anything about energy. And that's, man, that's so frustrating. Being a light worker is frustrating as <laughs> fuck. I think it's frustrating, especially if you're mixing it in with trying to understand this reality where the hermit, you know, somebody in here saying, oh, the Rothschilds paid for both sides of the war always. It's just like the hermit's just like, I'm looking up here. And did you even ask the question? Is there somebody else behind them that uses them as a shield? Like people, people are not, they're, they want the easy street. Mm -hmm. It's easy to just say the Rothschilds did it. It's just easy mm -hmm. to say this country, the, this religion, they're the ones who, they're the problem. This is the person who did it. It's like, do you think that it was just Fauci and then just put it on the blame on Fauci? It's like there was hundreds of billions of people who caused this last pandemic because they fell for it. It's not, you can't ever target a blame on, again, this is the card of giving out blame. It's ironic that people just want to sit here and just blame. These people did it. You can't, yeah. It's, like, look at the light, look at, look at, look at the world. A quarter of the world didn't follow the spell. There were hermits. Which is like, I don't give a fuck if I can't go out because they won't accept me someplace. I'll still go walk into a place and one ear out the other about a mask. Mm -hmm. I'm not walking near a fucking place to take a fucking experimental shot. Yeah. Right. It's the same mentality of like the hermit, right? Like, I'm sorry, but I can see through this and I don't need to label. This is the reason. And this is the person. And if you still believe it's a lab leak or it's a naturally occurring thing, there was no COVID. That that's if you're, if you're going to, if you want, if you want to blame it, you need to blame anybody all the people of the, that fell for it exactly you know what I mean? like that's what oh. i was gonna say you beat me to it <laughs> it's like that, that's like that's like so low vibration is just like oh my god i figured it out it's this family mm -hmm. oh my god like the fact that you are the one who manifested it yeah you're the one who manifested or your family manifested to go into the war like look at right now both sides you guys are the one manifesting this war just gonna continue it's just like you can't blame it on this and that it's just like you you gotta learn from what you learned over the last three years like you're gonna go down with that stuff or are you gonna follow it or are you gonna be an activist in it all yeah you're activating their fucking plan yeah that's why whoever it is and it doesn't matter whose it is because at the end of the day you're the one carrying it out yeah 
with your focus. That's why I always say your superpower is control of your focus. And I hate to keep hammering on a point that I've made in like the last three videos, but that is like, you don't know how important that is. Because like you said, y'all are the ones manifesting it. Until you learn how to train your mind. If you're sitting here flipping through social media like this, and you see that, you know what I do whenever I scroll past a video that says, so yesterday in Israel, swipe, bomb, going off, swipe. I'm not looking at that. Scroll past it. I'm not looking at that. And if every single person on the planet could train themselves to every time they see something stuck in their face that is designed to suck them in and grab their focus, if they could train themselves to swipe past it, this whole fucking thing would fall apart. Like you said, the, the, if you're going to blame anybody, blame the people who keep falling for it. Blame the people who have no control of their own energy for not taking control of their own frequency. Yeah. You know, like they, if you would just turn the fucking TV off, unfollow all the news pages, unfollow anybody that's spreading the bullshit. And if, if you learn how to just turn it off and take your focus away from it, none of it would work. Poof. Yeah, because if you were to take the hermit, for example, and let's say in October 2019, he decided to go take his, I need some time to myself. And right now today, he walked down the mountain and has just been watching the world and how it's all been, but didn't say anything, didn't get involved, didn't put blame, and then walked down and went, just started giving just the most simple thing, like, were you following the light? Because I was, did it affect me? Is all this affecting me? No. That's an interesting part. Like, it was crazy to me to hear some of those stories. Like, ironically, it was uh, Jared Leto. He was at the beginning of the whole pandemic. He was out for like months out in the desert, like where nobody could, he had no communications. Hmm. So he came back to LA and was like, what the fuck is happening? Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Right? So it's like there were people who were out in the world. They were just like, I mean, imagine being out in the middle of the African jungles you know, and guarantee you there's humans on this planet who have no idea what the last 30 years that we've all seen through our TVs and stuff even know what it is. Yeah. They don't even know. And do they have those thoughts or those worries or their concerns? No, they don't. So, you know, it, 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 it's one of those moments here where it's like the hermit's just like, I'm going to follow the light and the light's calling me this way if you want to keep trying to fucking scream and yell at me i'm not even gonna listen anymore that's what's hard you kind of have to get that way in life to where you know like i look at pe people just start oh so easy to put blame on this and on that and those are the people who just want to get their voice out where he's not concerning about getting his voice out until it's the moment to where it's needed most too. unless he has to yeah yeah and 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 and, and you can tell because it's Easily, the moment has been created for him divinely as he followed the light, not let me fucking put this out there and tell everyone that it's this people and it's yeah. this family and it's this, this. And losing it. And that's, what, and that's what's sad. I think the last three and a half years has created paranoia for people and also feeling that, you know, just even if you use the, con the conflict that's happening in this war right now, it's just like everybody's now a master of fucking like geopolitics dealing with holy religious situations and which person is it? It's just like, um, everybody became a fucking doctor in the last three and a half years. <laughs> everybody became a biologist. Everybody became a, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's just like, you know, to me as the hermit, it was like, I was just an astrologer. These planets were going to cause a problem and that's what it is. Yeah. So it was pretty easy to not follow it because the astrology said, don't follow this. Right? It's like right now, this has been a shitty week because the astrology is saying, don't look for this happy moment and start judging your life of happy moments. This is a moment where we're getting through and we're needing to stay awake and we're needing to realign ourselves with our true light, even when it's dark. Mm -hmm. And people don't want to do that. It's easy to go escape. I mean, just find something. And then where are you going to escape to? I think the, the, if, I, if it's hermit reverse, that's where it's scary to me because it's like, I'm escaping to go be alone, but really mm. you're not 
to do that. You're escaping to just because you don't want to have responsibility. You don't want to have ethics. You don't want to have whatever. You just don't want to face any problem and deal with it. Mm -hmm. You just, you just don't want to have to deal with anything. So it's like, I'm just going to be a flight risk to everybody in the universe, you know, and I don't want no bond. I get, uh, (laughs) I get hermit reversed a lot when people come to me and ask me about either a potential love interest or somebody new that just came in. That's one of the most common cards that comes out for a new relationship. I just met this person. We've been dating for two weeks. Uh, you know, what are their intentions? And, and like a good 75% of the time, the hermit verse comes out. And the way I read that in that type of situation is somebody who's afraid of being alone. It's almost kind of like the codependency energy. Somebody who just doesn't want to be alone to where it's like, I just need somebody, just somebody. I don't care who, just somebody. You know, because they don't want to be alone. They don't want to sit with their thoughts. They don't want to have to reflect on all the shit that they learn. They just want to, again, going back to what we were talking about a minute ago, where somebody just has to be in a new relationship. Like you hear people say so frequently, I need someone to meet my emotional needs. What that means, what that translates into is I am in emotional pain and I don't know how to deal with it. So I need somebody to come distract me from it. You know? Right. And that's usually more often than not what comes through whenever somebody is just jumping straight into a new relationship for no particular reason. It's not because you see or feel a genuine connection with this person. It's not because you see the potential or or our goals and morals could line up to build something amazing. It's just I just need a relationship with somebody. I don't want to be alone. I just got out of a bad breakup. It hurts. And it's energetically identical to running to the bar and getting drunk. Because you can't handle your stress, you know? Yeah, and you know, like, it reminds me of Freddie Mercury, Queen, like, find me someone to love, yet he's married. Obviously, he wanted something more. He didn't want to face that. And then he goes and fucking gets a guy, becomes gay. Oh, shit. And he dies of AIDS. (laughs) Yeah. Everybody looks up to this guy, but I don't. (laughs) <laughs> because everybody thinks I look like him. I hate that. Everybody's like, you look like Freddie Mercury. I'm like, oh, shut shit. the fuck up. I, dude, I'm That's the only time I'm out of my hermit is when I'm like, out of all the motherfuckers in the universe, you think I look like that fucking motherfucker? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but, you know, because I'm the last thing like that guy. Yeah. Find me somebody to love. I'm married. I have all these beautiful things in my life, but I can't see it. I want to go play with something else in my life that's going to kill me. Mm-hmm. How did he manifest that? Why did Elvis manifest the same shit? Codependency, trying to fill that, that unfillable mm-hmm. void. Yeah, or just also on top of that, putting pleasure mm-hmm. yeah. or pain. And I think that that's where, you know, the work in work, the work in relationships, the work in our missions, the work in our communication, the work in every aspect, our emotions in our life. You put the pleasure before the pain, you're going to get fucking reamed. And I don't know why people look up to him. I mean, he was a great person, but it's like nobody wants to talk about that. Same thing with Michael Jackson. Like nobody, great, great guy, I guess, big artist, right? Nobody wants to talk about like, the fuck, this guy obviously was so damaged. He needed to change the color of his skin. Fucking slept with kids in fucking his bedroom. Yeah, that's his Neverland. Why is it that everybody now, everybody thinks that Q, Michael Jackson's working for Trump. Is that a hermit? Or is that just like crazy lost super lost or people think that jfk is still alive and that he's still <laughs> yeah. alive and then he's working with trump yeah and then he's gonna just reappear as a hundred fucking years old plus <laughs> like i'm still here it's just like it's that that's that's the pleasure to get through these pains that people feel in life that they want to believe those kind of things well i mean people look up to people like that because it's the hive mind Like, I'm convinced of it. Like, when I was a kid, I think I said this in another episode. When I was a kid, I can remember all the other kids would be interested in this one band, like Led Zeppelin. And I would go listen to Led Zeppelin, and I'd be like, this music sucks, bro. It doesn't even sound good. How is everybody else interested in this? And I realized, it's like, I don't think they are. I think they're just pretending they are because that's what everybody else is doing. So why does everybody look up to somebody like Freddie Mercury? Because they think they're supposed to. Because everybody else does. 
So somebody like me who has the balls to say, uh, no, I don't like Queen. Their music sucks. And you know that I, that's probably going to trigger a lot of people. And they're going to, oh, my God, what's wrong with you? I don't give a fuck. You know, because right. there's so many people who are too afraid to speak their actual opinion. That, that's why that's right. why people look up to them because they think they're supposed to they don't that's even worse that his last you know that mercury was used for his name because it's like jesus everybody says oh is it freddie mercury retrograde and bullshit like that <laughs> yeah like, you're gonna connect him because he was a virgo i can understand but i'm sorry but let's not use the guy who fucking literally couldn't fucking control his fucking dick and what he liked and fucked over his wife and fucking lied and fucking to go fucking experience another side and then fucking died of AIDS. Mm -hmm. You don't see that that's a manifestation that was fucking dark as fuck. Like, how do you manifest that being a fucked up person? Chasing pleasure. You know? And everybody wants to feel bad for him and that's how they sold AIDS. They used him to sell AIDS as one of the, one of the main guys. It's, you know, like, again... So people will like, oh my god! It's like go look, go look at how they're selling all these things now with people. It's it's sad. It's like look at Justin Bieber. He's going to be the next Kurt Cobain. You watch. <laughs> He's in the same transit, same positions that Kurt Cobain had his chart. And look at him right now. He's wearing a fucking pink hat on top of fucking hoodie. While his chick's fucking dressed to the nine trying to start her shit. And he's fucking posting pictures of himself where he only posts her. Mm. Even just pictures that she takes on her own fucking phone. What was Kurt Cobain doing before he fucking died? Same shit. I don't know, man. That's what he was obsessed with Courtney Love. And fucking that's all it was, was just pictures of them two. And him just looking all weird and fucking started dressing weird and started acting weird. And started hmm. writing weird shit and started writing on his shoes with a Sharpie. And when I was in my Saturn master class, I, I just, because I've done so many Justin Bieber's for 17 mag and gotten it right. And I was like, you guys are watching the next Kurt Cobain, like disaster moment. It's the exact same astrology. It's the exact same timing coming in. And it's scary. Cause what did I see? I went to, we went to his Instagram, him drawing on his shoes. Hmm. It's like, you can try, you can see in people like it's easy to see that obviously Justin Bieber doesn't give a fuck about his life. He only cares about his love or his obsession with keeping his wife. Instead of even focused on himself or music or anything that draws him into the light to where he'll die, he'll kill yeah. himself. And that's, that's sad, but that's, that's where he's at. And you can see it and it's happening. And that's what I see in relationships is like, who's doing the work? Who's doing all the shit? If two people aren't putting everything they got into it, well then fucking it's easy to see which one is. And then it's hard when two people are putting the work because you got to look to work to work through that. It's going to be both people are stressed mm -hmm. and you got to learn to work through shit. Yeah. But that's better than, you know, being in places where, the hermit's just already just, I feel like if you were to make him like 15 feet tall and put him above you on every situation with a light, let me just put the light on every situation right now. It's very easy to see right now. It's easy to see who's putting the work in, who's not. It's easy to see who's fucking losing it, who's not. It's easy to see who fucking stays on top of their shit, who's not. It's just like always very simple, but yet nobody wants to see. It's like the hermit's just always around. Bing. Yeah. They don't want to see it because they have to look at themselves because that's what it always comes back to at the end of the yeah. day. Nobody wants to look at themselves. They don't understand. I just actually, I did a reading for somebody today who said something to the effect of this person wants to come back and work on us. Should I do it? And I said, well, you have to understand that in order to work on us, that means I work on me with you by my side and you work on you with me by your side. Yep. And it sounds simple enough when you just to talk about it, but to get two people willing to do that is so hard. Because I don't like looking at my own shit. None of us do. No. I don't like owning my shit and being like, yeah, that was, that was my fault. I got this fucking mm -hmm. shit that's this trauma from my childhood that I still haven't healed yet. And, you know, I, I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done. I don't even like doing that. And I've been on a healing path for fucking 
seven, eight years now. I've manifested my wildest dreams 10 times over and I'm still doing it. And I still am working on that. So in order to get two people, two people, not just one, not just the other, but both people willing to look at their, their self and own their own shit. That's what that light is. That's why, you know, when you shine that light on it, everybody runs from it because at the end of the day, you have to look at you. Nobody wants to. Yeah, it's a lot easier to ask somebody to go look at themselves and say it back to you yeah. than it is yeah. for you to look at yourself and actually do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, that, 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 that's a pattern in life I've had to learn to, to work on is like always being the one. I, I feel like I'm, I was always the bitch witch one, always, I'm so sorry if I can own this shit. It's never enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a hard place to be. And then, I, and then it's like, fuck, you know, I choose that. So it's like, that's where some people are on the other side where it's like, no, 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 everybody's the problem. They never own their shit. It's like, when, when are you going to talk about you owning your own shit? Yeah. And you can always tell because they don't put that up anywhere in their life. They don't, nobody could see. Again, they, they write with pencils. Yeah. Think that there's an eraser. There's no racer. Yeah, that's that's why, like a lot of times, especially like on my YouTube channel for the the general audience, uh, a lot of times what I'll say just to everybody generally, if I'm reading like a current relationship type energy, the best thing you can do is lead by example. Like I'm never gonna stand back and cross my arms and tell you that you have work you need to do and not be doing on myself yeah if i'm gonna like look at the person i'm dealing with and say yo you got some fucking issues you need to work on don't worry i'll go first because i got shit i gotta work on too so you're gonna watch me i don't even care if you believe me or not don't believe me matter of fact please don't that motivates me to do it more you're gonna watch me own my shit and evolve into a higher vibrational version of myself. And what happens, see, here's one thing that I've noticed too. When you take the initiative to do that yourself, to be the bigger person and just work on yourself, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, the person that you're dealing with will see that and follow suit. Most of the time, about 75% of the time. But if they don't, well, you're going to make a frequency change and they're not. So you're going to ascend up to a higher level and the two of you will separate by way of universal law they're staying down there on that frequency. You move to a new frequency. You're going to attract somebody in that's, there's a lot more potential. And they're not. They're going to stay down there at the bottom of the mountain, spinning in circles, going through the same cycles over and over and over because they won't look at themselves. It's always everybody else's fault. And, you know, these people, they, they keep going through the same cycles over and over and over and blaming everybody else, you know? Yeah, it's like everybody at a fucking day party in Vegas it's the opposite of the hermit mm -hmm. up on the mountain doing the work. It's like, this is a card where it's like, there is no FOMO. The FOMO would be at the mm -hmm. pool party, right? The FOMO is at what looks really cool. Like, it's like, what looks cool is where you're at FOMO. Yeah. Fuck, I'm missing out on life. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Now it's different if the people are working and running it. Cause the, if you never, I, I've been in the club industry for so long in my life. It's like the people who work in it, we're not losing our shit being there. We're not thinking it's mm -hmm. super cool. We're not, over, we're, we're just like doing it for the work and how, the work that it takes to throw it and do it. And when people come up like, Oh my God. So dude, like, uh, I, I gotta go. I'm in the back. I'm running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Like it, it's hilarious to see people's like, just lost like fantasy like about things that are empty mm -hmm. i think that's what he realizes this card looks empty although it's the opposite he's fulfilled yeah at the highest degree because it's a major arcana and he's not filled from the physical like a uh, empress or the emperor from a drive and ambition a, a direction None of those. He's the only one that's filled by the ether, the divine, the, the, the light that, that sparks. And that's it. That's the only thing that'll fill you up fully this life. Nothing else will. Mm -hmm. Everything that comes through that light lens, though, does help with it. Yeah. I think if you look at it from that place, 
then you're all, you're all good. But if you're looking, you know, it, it reminds me when I was young and I was looking for something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you, you have to get it and realize yeah, exactly. it doesn't fill the void, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then it does, never comes to you even when you were, you were looking. Yeah. You fail, and then, and then it comes to you, and you're like, why, why was I chasing for that anyway? Yeah. You know? It, it's funny, too, because, like, at what point do these people who are out here chasing these things that are empty, at what point do they realize it's empty? You have to realize that at some point. I can understand wanting to go chase something, thinking that's going to fill a void. I totally get that. But at some point, you have to realize that this isn't going to fill the void. This is empty. Like, on, I learned that on my manifestation journey when at the very beginning, all I wanted to manifest was $100,000 a year, you know? And I'll never forget the year I made my first $100,000. I didn't realize it until the following year when we filed taxes. And they said, you made $110,000 last year. And I was like, that's it? And I still didn't get it. I was like, oh, okay, never mind. I fucked up. Okay, I need 200000 That'll do it. And then the next year, I made a quarter million. And I didn't realize it until the following year when we filed taxes. They said, yeah, you made 273000 last year. And I went, that's it? That felt exactly the same as the 100000 And then at that point, I was like, oh, oh, I get it now. It don't matter how much I make. Mm-hmm. It's all going to feel the same. Oh, that's empty. That's what they mean when they say money doesn't buy happiness. And everything else is the same. You see people chasing relationship after relationship after relationship. And, you know, they, they get in that relationship and it makes them so happy. And then they're tired of it. And then they go jump to somebody else and it makes them so happy for a minute. And then they're tired of it. And then at what point? I get it. I get it. We've all been there. But at what point do you stop and say, whoa. Maybe this isn't going to create the feeling for me that I thought it would. But the problem with humans today is they're so programmed to believe that pleasure is happiness. Most people don't know what true happiness really is, you know? No. Because uh, that's all we've seen in the, the movies. That's all, that's all you hear about in the music is pleasure, 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 pleasure. So people just chase pleasure, and pleasure is temporary. It's going to wear off. And then once it wears off, they chase the next pleasure. And again... I get it, but at what point do you stop and realize this isn't doing it for me? And then go do this, you know? Yeah, and I think part of what that hermit card too is, is that it reminds me, it's like, I don't spend my time, believe it or not, even though I post, I'm a, I don't like to say I'm a social media persona, but I've been one a long time, but I've been a persona in all fields of media for my whole, pretty much adult, whole, whole adult experience. But it's like, I, spe- I don't spend my time on this. Like I will be on my ancestry because I'm putting together a binder of all of my daughter's fucking lines, including Sophia's whole lines and her family's for, for Aurora. It's like, that's fulfilling because it's something that I'm giving to spark something of wisdom, of life, of something that's sacred and beautiful. Or I'll spend my time researching or find my ways or I'll always learn how to be better at something that I can or just be working on. It's like when you brought up the money thing, it's like, you know, there's something called working capital and I own my two corps here in this. It's just like you get to a place where it's like money doesn't buy you happiness. Money's just used to be used to buy, to buy the cords that just went out that I needed to. And <laughs> like, you know, like it, 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 it beca- when you, when you really get to the place that everybody wants to be, all the money is just going out the door to keep. Yeah something that's going and only stay alive if it's worth the light that it bears. It's all that it is. Yeah. And it's all the, all money is, is just the necessity to keep the, it's just the fuel that just keeps the fire burning. If it's real divine fire, that's it. Yeah. And that includes a relationship, which means it's not that it's about the high, the highs can be higher than you even expected by the dedication and the commitment and the continue to grow together and go through the challenges and the pain gives you the real pleasure in life. Yeah. And overcoming it. And so I think to me, it's like when you're, when you're searching and you're looking for something, you feel like something's empty. It's like, where are you not participating? That means you've pulled out, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and it means that you weren't the hermit because the hermit's going towards the light. It's that you've pulled out of the light. You were just swiping on your TikTok all day. Yeah. 
I just can't believe that people do that. I'm so glad that we're, I don't know, maybe older and that I just <laughs> did not fall for that. But, yeah. you know, it's like, I could say that there's like 10 other apps that have nothing to do with social media that I've opened up more in my life than TikTok. Yeah, I can't stand TikTok. Yeah, no, it's the fucking plague of all plagues. It's horrible. Yeah. Honestly, I, whenever I've looked at it, especially <clears throat> I've made apps for nine years and I know all the tricks that was intentionally meant for dopamine hits intentionally mm -hmm. yeah. and it's got zero payback. It's just as bad as porn. No oh, shit. I know I, I made a TikTok for the show here, but when I get on TikTok, that's the, all I do is I'll cut a clip out of this show and I'll put it on TikTok and close out. Yeah. I don't flip through there. I don't read comments. I don't even know how to like read I, uh, yeah. it, what ha it, it's the most confusing app I've ever used. I'm yeah. like, I'll put, I'll put up a TikTok like you just I'll, whatever. I'm like, Oh, this was a good one I put out on Instagram and on fucking to Facebook reels. All right. Like, guess I'll throw this one on TikTok. Maybe people can learn something from it. Right. And yeah. then I'll go back two, three weeks later. I'm like, how do you even read if somebody's commenting or it blows know. my mind. It's all like <laughs> messages, activity, and one thing. And I'm like, it's so confusing yeah. and lost. I'm like, I don't have time for this. Yeah. But it's like that life, I just see people just swiping. It's weird because you see people swiping whenever you actually see in TV, right? You see people you know, on their phones, and all you see them is swiping the next video. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, so pe people want to blame who's the side behind the wars and who's the side trying to take over your life and all that it's like you're just letting it suck yeah you right and it's so easy it's like why aren't you getting any work done go look at your screen t screen time yeah or do, do you ever do this do you ever go out like into public somewhere like every time i go get my hair cut i go in and i'll sit down and i'll go to grab my phone but first i'll look around everybody in the waiting room is like this Yeah, and I and then that's when I'm like, uh -uh, I put mine. Everybody, everybody. I got to put my phone in my pocket then and just sit and stare, because it makes me feel like, oh my god, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to look no. like that. You know? Do you do you ever get that? Walk around in public somewhere, everybody's sitting there like this. Everybody, and it makes me feel so like, oh my god, I'm I'm a I'm a sheep. I got to put my phone in my pocket. I mean, that's why in Matrix 4, I loved it because it was so about the update to the Matrix and that it was meant that they were getting more production out of more people that were giving their energy away and more fear. And they were all just stuck in the elevator scene. Just everybody's not talking anymore and just they're stuck on their phone. The whole idea of that update in the Matrix was so gnarly and most didn't get it. I can't believe people didn't get Matrix 4. I was like... I haven't even seen it. Oh, my God. Well, especially since we do the show, you should probably watch that one. Pretty gnarly. That, that's about what it's about. Like, people people are so lost right now in this moment. Like, people are so afraid of zombie life and all this stuff, and they already have already crossed into it. I mean, you, you can still use it to your advantage, though. You know, like... Whenever I'm scrolling, I scroll too. It's informational shit. Yeah. It's, it's research. Yeah. You know where you're going. Yeah. You're not walking into a, you're not walking into hell intentionally. <laughs> I program. You know my, what I mean? Yeah. I program my algorithms intentionally on purpose. I'm very specific in particular about how I program my algorithms. But there's some of them, like the YouTube shorts feed, that one doesn't work the way the rest of them do. Like Facebook and Instagram is really easy to go through and program what you want your algorithm to show you. But the YouTube, there's something up with that one because it'll just throw random shit that I keep, like Christian shit. I don't know if you ever go through YouTube oh, shorts. I've been predicting this. Dude, though. they have been like, I can't swipe five times without a Christian trying to shove Jesus up my ass. And I'll click, do not recommend this channel. Do not recommend this channel. They keep trying to shove Christianity up my ass. That's the war propaganda. It's scary that war propaganda now is religious. Hmm. So it's like on one algorithm, it's all Christian Israeli situations. <clears throat> and then the other algorithm, it's 
Palestinian, Middle Eastern, Iranian, Iranian, all that. People can't see it right now. It's not about COVID anymore. It's not about, you know, it's like, it's just, and then, and then guess what? They're just going to fucking, it's just horrible. The genocide that's going to happen on both sides. Yeah. You know, and then who's going to be in the middle of it? Christians. <laughs> Christians. That's why I, I'm actually more worried for Jews and for fucking all people of the Middle East because the Christians are coming in there to take over both. And it's scary. Especially, I can say that because I'm an astrologer. Thank God. Uh, it's not following a religion that... I look at it and I go, I can't believe the Jews are trusting the Christians for this moment. And I can't believe that, you know, the, the Middle East is just going to watch the, the Christians try and, like, the, 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 they all know that the Christians are here to fuck them. You're already going to see it in a year from now, Russia join up with America. I know that sounds crazy, but well, no, it was I mean, not crazy in World War II for the USSR to join in some big fight because it then target targeted it was it was the Japanese and Nazism, right? Yeah. Now it'll be it'll be Russia and Israel and America against the Middle East, and they'll take them back, no problem. And then it will get so bad on one side, then it will be like, well, what if we go against these people? What if the I, I'm the, the most afraid because this is a very hermit situation. I was just like, what if we get through this and then they they fucking do some horrible shit, which they're already doing and they're going to continue doing. And they get rid of a bunch of the Middle East and then watch. Now Russia comes in with America and goes, yeah, we need to we need to return Jerusalem back to the fucking the Knights Templar days and make it Christian again. Nobody's talking about that. It used to be Christian land too. Right, so it's like when I see all these fucking Democrats and Republicans in America and all these people in the UK who used to own the land too come up and go, we want to go to war. I'm like, in my mind, I'm not thinking about Jew or Palestinian. I'm thinking how those two are getting fucked by the big boys in town that think that they have their fucking Christly fucking reason to go in to reclaim the land themselves. I can't believe people don't see that. You really think that Christians are going to let the Jews hold on to the land if they help them? I mean, it, it. Think of that. Nobody's saying that out loud. Everybody's saying other stuff and anti Semitism stuff. I'm not even saying anti Semitism because you can't say that about a Christian. <laughs> right? I'm more afraid of the Christians. Yeah. Oh, wait. This was our land, actually. You two fucked it up. I can't believe that people aren't seeing that. It's oh, set up perfectly it. for that right now. I mean, I think you would, I don't know. I was raised in a really hardcore Christian household, so that doesn't surprise me at all. But, I mean, you would probably have to have heard a lot of the Christian dogma and propaganda growing up in order to see that. Did you? Were you raised religious? I don't remember. I was not raised it. Of course, I have grandparents who were Christian, and then, of course... I went to the youth group on my own. No, oh, so you were you were exposed to it though. Yeah, growing up. Yeah, yeah. So that's. I mean, it. I think anybody who who has been exposed to the the beliefs and the dogma and whatnot of Christianity and and how that's the that's the chosen land of the Christians. You know, that's not surprising to me at all. And I can I can remember asking questions about that so long ago, and it and my grandparents and people at church given me these big long drawn out explanations that make no fucking sense whatsoever about the old testament and the new testament and and it just it never ever ever made any fucking sense but i mean i could see that long story short i could see that very easily i mean i kind of thought that was common sense <laughs> no not not in, not in the media right now uh -uh. It's, it's always like who's trying to win at this one i'm like well the third party in this whole thing used to have the lands 
and the transits we had that started 2020. Hmm. Hmm. That lost. So I'm like, oh, it's going to be the same people who fucking lost the lands in that time period of the 1280s. It's going to fucking go back and try and get it and act like they're helping the people that have it now against their common enemy in order to take the land. So, you know, but of course, you know, I'll get in trouble for saying that, but I don't care. But I'm, I'm actually saying what nobody's saying is like, I fucking am scared for the Jews and I'm scared for all Middle Eastern people because of that. And, you know, that's why I follow the ways of the old mystics and, and, and whether it's Rosicrucian or anything, because it was Arab mysticism mixed with fucking Eastern, mixed with West. It was, it's spiritual, it's all of it. You know, so if you think about the spiritual community, it's like, whether it's the Jewish Kabbalah, the Jewish mysticism, Arab mysticism, we get genie from all the Arab astrologers and astrologer. If you're an astrologer and you don't know Arab astrology, then you're not an astrologer. It's like, they're the ones who carried it after the fucking dismantling of so many of the Westerners in 500 AD, all the way up into the beginning of the thousand AD around there, 800 to 900. So it's like, it's like, it's like, as somebody who's a mystic, let's just say, we incorporate all the tribes. Right now, you're just seeing a tribal war. And, and it's always the one that's going to look like the good people to help the people that are on the lands that they want back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's the... Well, that's, that's more of a hermit way to look at it, you know? It's like, huh. Yeah. And, like, I'm for everyone here, but who's trying to fucking do that? I guess I'll be the crotchety fucking dude who will say that, you know? And that's what blows my mind is it's divide and conquer and super easy to see it. Yeah, and if they don't see it now, like, I mean, this because this, this is the last chance. If it, after everything that we've been through for the last four years, if people don't see it now... We, I mean, that, that this is the last chance to get people to understand how the game is played and 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 what's happening, and that we need to come together in 2023. If we're still fighting each other over religion, we're still complaining, you know, and bitching about sexuality. We're still judging each other because of skin color. And all this bullshit still in 2023. This is the last chance. If the humans don't wake the fuck up now, we're fucked. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's what's I think the hermit moment too is knowing, you know, it does get to a last chance where you're at the top and you've got all the wisdom and it's like you follow the light and like you either do or you don't. Yeah, it's a do or don't, and. That's what's really hard because it's, again, it, it's not which side's right or wrong here. You know, studying old, being an astrologer and studying old alchemy, for example, like when European mystics went over to, to understand Jewish Kabbalah, right? They were mystified. They, were, they incorporated it. When they went to the Arabs and learned how to follow the stars and follow it in a different way too, they were mystified and they incorporated it. They weren't, like, oh God, I'm not incorporating these people's mystical works. They incorporated it from all that you see right now. And it's weird because it's like, I guess maybe this is a hermit moment for me to be like, hey, listen, like all those religions, their mystic mysticism sides are what, even in Christianity, it's the Quakers, it's the ones that let people speak of the light and didn't make it to where there was a preacher, they made it to where everybody within the house of friends spoke whatever that God had told them to speak out loud to others. And that was a mystical thing and it was not popular. And it was another one of those things that that's was people don't realize the witch trials in America became because when everybody started colonizing here, all these different versions of Christianity came out and they started calling people who didn't follow their version of Christianity, witches. 
you know, and it wasn't mystical, right? It was, it's always look at this and this is the way it is. And I'm, you know, but if you do your real work, you're going to, and you know what? Like it actually is said by apostle Paul, it's like those that are strong enough can eat meat, but those that are weak and can't understand it all and can't deal with it all are just meant to have the milk this life. <laughs> and a lot of people aren't ready and you can't force people to be ready. They have to be ready on their own. And I think that's the hardest part of the hermit is like, whether you watch your best friend and they're addicted to something and then they just die. I don't have resentment towards him or any of my other friends who've overdosed lately or any of that. Like, I just literally love them. And I go, when it's their time to figure it out, it's their time to figure it out. And no matter how much you can try and say or force somebody, can't force anybody you can't you know you can't change your relationship because of what you do and what you say you can't convince people the, the hermit doesn't convince anybody they have to already be in a state where they're willing to listen to some wisdom and retain it and not a lot of people are ready for that a lot of people want you know it's sad that we have people right now billions in this world that are looking at their phone every moment wanting an update on the war to see what side's doing a bigger blast and, and, and killing. Instead of looking at their phone to figure out how to build a business and become financially free or how to manifest their wildest dreams or how to meditate and get in touch with the divine, how to astral project, how to do, you know, yeah. looking at their phone. Cause I, I like this little meme that floats around social media that like years and years ago, we thought that ignorance was the result of not enough information. And in today's day and age, when you have access to all the information you could possibly ask for in your pocket, ignorance is a choice, you know? Yeah. And that's just it right there. Give everybody free access to all the information that they could possibly ask for. And they're, they're, they're not doing anything with it. People will, they won't take the time to research what's really going on in the world, but they'll spend fucking 30 minutes on Facebook taking a test to see what kind of potato they are, you know? And, at the end of the day, a ketchup potato. <laughs> if they make one like that, I don't know. Yeah. Just throw some Heinz on a cat on a tomato potato and call it ketchup potato. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, I you know, I, I I always find the funniest test if I were to put somebody on one of my desktops. I like, can hey, can use any of my desktops. What are you gonna do with it? Like. They'll, they'll always go to like some internet page or something. It's like you could create the whole universe with this right now. Make anything you want. You can research the deep because some of the stuff you can't do on your phone. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, so if you see me on my desktop, I am like this. I am like mystified. Like I am so deep into some shit. And oh my God, let me connect that. And let me connect this. And let me, oh my God. Like I'm on pages that I didn't, nobody would even know existed. Like, cause they're not, they're not through CNN. They're not through yeah. Facebook. They're not through social media portals. They're not through those it's like people don't realize they're in a house of fucking a carnival with just like six, seven doors. And that's all they go through. And then they end up, why, why am I still in the carnival? You're only going through the same doors all the time. And I, and I feel like that's the other thing about the hermit is he found a way to find the, the divine path that that's not worried about those doors or not, you know? Like, or if, if, if fucking CNN and them would start putting this kind of information out there, if they would start talking about manifestation on CNN, if they would start talking about astrology and how to read a chart on CNN, you know, and, and they would spend more than a half a day discussing the placebo effect in medical school. Right. The, that, that's the problem. The problem is that all of these trusted sources of information that have been trusted for so many decades and decades – people can't wrap their mind around the fact that they're lying to them. So everybody is still going to these same sources for information. So the solution to the problem is put this information and, and, and funnel it through the mainstream sources that everybody's getting their information from. That's the, that's how you wake mankind up. If, if I was able to call shots for just a week, 
I see the solution. That's what pisses me off so right. bad. I see the solution to get people to wake their asses up. It's where they're getting their information from. That's the only thing. If you could just get people to understand that that's false information and they would look elsewhere, but they won't. So you have to start funneling the truth through the mainstream sources. And if you did that, if they started talking about, oh, oh, uh, a new study tonight on CNN breaking news, a new study shows that manifestation is real and, and here's how it works. And, oh, you know, let's bring on this scientist to talk about it. Yeah, well, you know, and they started talking about this shit on CNN, start doing shit like that. Dude, bet you we would see a fucking awakening within the next year unlike ever before. And we wouldn't have to go through all this bullshit. We wouldn't right. have to, to, to let all the atrocities and crazy shit keep happening. You know? So... I thought it was interesting, though, because all the mainstream media did cover a scientist who proved that there is no free will after his 40-year study. Of course, as an astrologer, I'm fatalistic, so I get it, because he says that once you understand that you don't have full free will, you'll find peace in knowing how to get through things, which it kind of reminds me of the hermit. Everybody <laughs> tries to control, but I know that not everybody is down with that. But it's like, you know, it's like you have no choice over, you have to breathe. You can't say, don't want to breathe. You can't control your heart no matter how much you would, die, you would pass out. And then you can't control it. Like there's all these things and everything that's led from the last event already beyond your control as you're trying to control in this event, right? But there was a lot more to that. But that, so that goes into some really deep shit. Right, it's like you can't stop the solar eclipse that just happened, or you can't stop the lunar eclipse that's coming. It's like no matter how much you want to, no matter how high on the hill you get, or how below in the dark part of the sea, it's still going to happen. So if it was full free will, you'd be able to stop it. But that's where it's going to be an interesting. What I, what I think the new earth is, is the beginning of feeling what true, full, total free will feels like. Yeah. And I think that's the breaking point that we're at. But I think that's where it's, maybe that's why, you know, if you think of the outer, whether you want to call those ETs, I don't like that name, extraterrestrial, just because we're in the terrestrial. But the outer divine forces out there have put, still a strangle on this place to not fully let it pop off let's say because what happens if it what, if people were to be given that and they're already this easy to corral you know that's what i feel like the light work mission is is to get people to to, to where they're using their energy to where that does raise the vibration off limitation that we do feel. So I'm somebody who doesn't, I believe in evolution. I believe that we can evolve out of this, but you know, these limitations that we have are caused by the limitations that people have in themselves. And that's what I think this card represents. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's what it's kind of interesting though. They are putting that out, but they, they, I think for most people, that's like a hopeless thing. When it, to me, I was like, "Oh, thank God!" But most people they don't understand why because I'm like, it's making them see like, "Oh, yeah, the actions I'm doing are kind of a repeat, which is causing me to not have free will and the conditioning I've had." The, the, it's making them look at it, which I think is how you break the spell. I mean, you, you, with the people who still turn to those sources, you gotta, you gotta start it off slow for them. You gotta get them a little baby thought, plant a little baby seed in there. You know, that may be, I don't know, that may be a little bit too much. Because if, if you're still the type of person that trusts CNN, eh, I don't know if you, and not, not to be rude, but I don't know if you have the capacity to really, truly, fully understand that yet. You will eventually, but I think that may be a little bit too much for people who still trust CNN. 
So it could have just flown over their fucking head. Or that could have just been used to manipulate them. Oh, I have no free will. Okay, well, I guess I'll just accept that I have to wear a mask because I don't have free will, you know? I know, and I, I see people here. Well, thank God, Donald will be in his one year, and it's just like, yeah, his Saturn will be squaring his lunar eclipse in a year and a half from now. So it's like, you know, it's just like people get to, oh, I want this person to be it. And then watch, right? If Let's say he does come back. He'll be in his late 70s, almost 80. And <laughs> you know, like people aren't looking, as astrologers look at William Lilly, back when Charles II was anointed, was given the honor from Charles II to, hey, this is the date that the anointment's going to happen. Do you like it? And he looked at the chart and said, no. And then the king went, well, I like it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. And that was the last time that an astrologer for the, for the British Empire was used. And I feel bad because he was right about the chart. But it's like, you know, no matter how much I love who I, I think would be good for the world and so forth, I look at the astrology of every single person that's up to become possible president. And they all have the worst alignments ever. It's like all I see, and I've made this prediction that everybody will be so upset, both sides this election yeah over that nobody's gonna be happy yeah i mean we're getting up into a point anywhere where they're we're moving into a world where it eventually 10 15 years from now there will be no presidents and prime ministers you know because yeah. right now the president of the united states is the president of a corporation yeah. a corporation that's bankrupt and already gone into receivership so technically, it's illegal for, for the United States to have a president. It's illegal to have a president and run a bankrupt corporation. So at some point, the whole damn thing is going to collapse. and crumble. So, I mean, that's why it's been a show. Yeah, exactly. So that's probably, that makes sense if you look at the astrology of every person. Because you know they look at that shit. You know damn good and well they look at that shit too. They probably don't care because it's like, well, we're getting rid of that system anyway. There will be no president of the United States as it were. There will be probably here coming up soon. There will probably be um, the, I don't even know if you would call it the president, but of the United States Republic. I don't even know if they would call that a president, whatever you would call that. Maybe a prime minister or a king or something, you know, but it's, it's not even a corporation anymore. So. No, I mean, that's where, I mean, if you take the, the history of republics it would be the senate and then it was an emperor oh right but it's like it, it would just it, it really is it's you know does it get to a point to where it's not so much redesigning but you know just going like does the executive need to be one person it, it should you know yeah there, you know like that's that's the that's the harder look in it, but you know, it's like something beyond our imagination at this moment of evolution that the best we've got of freedom has been a republic, but it's been federalized since the constitution was made. So it was like, eh, it's not the best. It's of course better than anarchy. So what's the middle place between anarchy <laughs> and a republic, which is very unknown, which I would call the new earth. You know, you try the opposite side, you get to communism, and then you get to full just dictator, tyrannical, like nobody's allowed on a death planet, right? So it's like we've already come close to that, and we're feeling both at the same time, you know? So, so I have to tell anybody, anybody attached to who they want to win this year coming up, it's just yeah. like, just don't. You're going to be unhappy. Yeah, it's just a big old ego it's show. Anyway. Very unhappy. Very unhappy. People, I've, I've, that's one thing that I learned very early on whenever Trump and Hillary were first going at it with each other. Um, at the time, I can remember very vividly, I didn't know anything about anything back then. I didn't know anything about conspiracies. 
I didn't give two diddly jack shits about politics at all. But I can remember, I heard that everyone was saying that I didn't even know who Donald Trump was. I didn't have a clue who he was. But everybody's saying there's this dude named Donald Trump who's this racist, homophobic, horrible person who's running for president. And I believed it. I was like, oh, okay. Well, damn, that's crazy. And then at at that point, I was living in this little economy studio and I had nothing to do. That was like one of the very few stations that would come on the TV. So I watched the debate with Trump and Hillary and I could see so clearly. I'm like, whoa, they're ganging up on dude. Like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Like this lady, Hillary Clinton, aren't you married still to the dude who cheated on you? And got his dick sucked while he was in office. And, and you're talking about him saying grabbing woman by the pussy? What? Made no sense to me. I was like, holy fuck. Are you serious, dude? So I saw it clear as day. And, and it, 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 I mean, I, what he was telling Billy Bush was people who make it really big can grab women by the pussy. Yeah. Well, people well, don't take the context correct yeah but i mean whatever it was it just blew my mind it it was at that point that i realized this is all a big show this is all a bunch of bullshit there's no way that you're you're gonna come down on him for saying that when your husband cheated on you while he was in the office and then that's when i started realizing people weren't voting for hillary they were just voting against trump and a lot of people weren't voting for trump they were voting against hillary so that's why I started realizing that, oh, okay, you're not voting for anybody. You're just, you're just hoping that the other person loses. So that's the, the, the mentality of most of these people. They don't care about the policies. They don't care what this person's going to actually do. If they did, they would clearly see that every single time somebody gets into office, nothing ever happens. The only time anybody ever did any fucking thing in office was when Trump was in office. But before that... Every single time somebody would come into office, they would say, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm going to do that, this is going to happen, and nothing fucking happened. So at what point do you step back and see it's a big show? You don't. You're not voting for anyone. You're just voting against the other person. So it's, it's got that childlike mentality of, you know, my team is going to win just because it's my team. You know, the Republicans are going to win, not because I care about this person's policies just because you're a democrat you see what i'm saying and and yeah 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 so uh hopefully that'll come to an end hopefully at some point that's what i'm banking on well it's funny because the president we all love the most is george washington he wasn't elected he was chosen by the people who created the revolution the declaration the Articles of Confederation, and then at the Constitutional Convention. There was no people that voted him in. And there was probably no political party, was there? And he was not affiliated with a party. He was a Mm -hmm. (laughs) common-sensocrat. So, you know, that's what's interesting about where we're going is the end of Pluto Capricorn two weeks before it leaves is during the election, meaning the old system is going to run one more time. People just don't want to get their hopes up. One team's going to win and they're going to pull that person out. And then they think, oh, well now the other team, and then it's going to be like one of those scenarios where it's like both sides are going to get what they didn't want. Good. Both sides. Both sides are time. Both sides. It's going to look like one side won and that team's going to feel so bad. And the other team's going to feel so high, then they're going to pull that from them, and then that other team's going to feel good, and then they're going to both be at an equal place, and they're going to throw in, and this is, this is who it is. And both people are going to look at each other and say, what? And that's how you cause revolution. So It's about damn time they did something that pisses both sides off at the same time. When are people going to understand that? that I, they just, I just don't think they will. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. I don't, I don't, I don't think they're going to. They're not going to understand until the world comes crashing down and they go to swipe their card and it doesn't work. And That's get, ha- that happened in the UK this weekend. I mean, no the whole country. Me. That don't surprise me. It happened and then the media didn't say anything. Hmm. 
So people just spend out and then all the tell everybody at every store was like, sorry, the cards aren't working. It's, and it was all on social media. Like everybody's like in the UK, like our mm. cards aren't working. And then what, what do all these people do that are running these stores? They don't have cash. They don't have cash to cash, give you cash back. So unless you could give the exact cash, people are, people don't get it. Like they don't, Oh, well, and then the, for the people who just have a bunch of cash, think, oh, it'll be fine. I have a bunch of cash. It's like, well, yeah, but not everybody has cash to yeah. get the things that you need. So and they can't pay you back in cash. So, I mean, that's why, you know, I think it's ironic. You just see crypto blowing up right now. You know, shit's going down right now. And the amount of whales that moved money over this weekend, I, of course, on one of my main telegrams is whale alert. And all I do is just see every transaction in the, whether it's tens of millions to a million to whatever, and just see where they're moving money. Cause you could just see in crypto, like this wallet that had $25 million in ETH just moved it to Coinbase. This wallet just moved 48 million of Bitcoin into fucking another wallet. You can just see the moves on that on, on anybody who's really in crypto watches those moves. Yeah. And all I saw for the last four days is just billions being moved from wallet to this, to that, to that. I'm like, hmm. hmm. Okay. Yes. And we're all waiting for a quote unquote speaker of the house, which just never happened before, right? The corporation's place to where it has a public voice from the people has no speaker that can do anything. That means the house has been closed for two weeks. second they pick one that's when you see the war that's all everyone's waiting on in the middle east mm. it's not about oh look at these republicans and oh, no, jim jordan wouldn't do the war this person wouldn't do that you know right whoever gets up there is going to be the slimiest slime ball slimy just just to get the here we're funding the wars is that because right now they can't do anything israel can't go in more and do the big thing because they need america's help and what does america need america needs a fucking congress to declare war so the president can't declare war they can just do little like oh well i i, I sent our people here and if there's an issue, they can fire some shit and they've got 90 days to contain things, but we can't go full blown out war and support until Congress declares war. So why do you think this is happening? Super easy to see. So they would just hurry up and get it over with. <laughs> no, this is how they tease people because they're looking for pleasure and they're getting pleasure out of waiting for war. They're getting they're getting hard and they're getting wet <laughs> which is sad oh yeah well maybe 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 they'll get what's coming to them then maybe mm. maybe maybe i don't know maybe they'll be the people that that I, and i never used to when this all this shit really first started popping off i i didn't think that i would ever see myself looking at it this way but in a way it's going to get to a point where natural selection is going to have to run its course if that's what you want to call it <laughs> you know that's that i don't know another word to describe the people who don't choose to awaken or who don't have the capacity to awaken natural selection or divine selection whatever you want to call that so there's just some people out there who are just addicted to it and there's nothing Nothing we'll be able to do. I wish they would just get it over with so that we could just... No, I mean, you know, they're trying to normalize, you know, kids or guys or people who are into kids now, right? Pedophilia mm -hmm. is like, what is it? Minor attracted person. No. So you see, they're going to put, they're going to have Michael J Jackson music playing with, what would that be? M minor, M M A P map, like, mm -hmm. become map. Free, you know? Yeah. And then they're gonna they're gonna do that with the war stuff too it's just like they're gonna be placing like 
Are you ready to defend Christ in the Holy Land army? Think of that. And you watch all the Ben Shapiro's and all the fucking right wing media is just going to start pushing. You need to turn to Christ or you need to turn to supporting Israel from a spiritual perspective or else we're dealing with the devil and then the right or the, the other side and the Muslims are saying that, you know, this is, this is, this is the prophet Muhammad, but they've, it's been prophesized and, da, 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 and everybody's just going to get locked in, stepped into the fucking, this is what Pink Floyd's been warning about forever. That very hermit combo yeah. today. That's what I was gonna say. It's time to time to be tend, a hermit then. Time to go be a hermit. But it was good to be with you all. Stay stay lit. That's the best thing to do with this card is stay lit. I got the roads cross. It's always behind me. I don't follow the normal cross. So, which by the way was not a cross. It was, it was an Etsy for. The mother of Constantine, she never sold any crosses and they wanted to make a new cross so he got his dead mom to use her true cross. So the cross that people wear today is a failed mom, Zetsi, from her <laughs> son who had the power to create the Christian doctrine. I don't know how true it is, but I actually heard that, and you, you never know. There was no crucifix cross that, I it's heard like that the cross Jesus so stupid. I heard the cross Jesus died on was actually upside down because that's the way they did it back in the day. So, well, that's what I'm saying is like people have no idea. Like they, yeah. they, the images they see and all that is all needs to be the, the cross of Earth, you know. Yeah. And the original depictions of Jesus was in a in a a, a Roman Greek cross, right? The Constantine change that for his mom hmm. people today and of course because jesus dies on all four corners and rises again and all and just you know it's one of those moments where it's just like either either get it or you don't well, we're gonna keep spitting the truth until people get it <laughs> follow the light or you don't yeah if you want to keep playing it the fucking the club at the bottle service and looking cool or follow the hermit it's up to you you're at that point now because that's where they slaughter everybody is in there and that's where all everybody gets fucked up and everybody loses their shit and they get fucking cheated on and they get fucking all that and that people are looking at these people or that people and it's like they don't realize the environments they go into is what fuck them up the most It was just a club. It was like, yeah, the club with the guy who's been already really hands hands on when he gets drunk with everybody's girlfriend who's already been kicked out of like four clubs and can't come back in and he's at the same club that you're at right now. Of course he'd be there. Waiting for you, right? Why did you attract that? You kind of like that, but you won't say that out loud. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Fucking crazy. Crazy time. It's just like your ex boyfriend, right? Yeah, I thought so. I mean, like, if, why does this keep happening to me? Time to go into hermit mode. Probably because every TikTok video you watch is every girl who's like, men are horrible and every guy will cheat and every guy will do this. Okay, that's what you're getting. Which is kind of crazy because, like, we only see that in the guy world through, like, a couple channels, like Andrew Tate and weird shit, right? Yeah. Well, no. That and that's, what, that's what's weird about my, my – who was it? Oh, I think it was Alex that was talking about it. Like, Andrew Tate's Muslim. He's Islam. Yeah. But his brother's Christian. Yeah. Yet they teach the same bullshit. So what's going to happen now? Their whole business just went up in flames. Well, I mean, the, think all, about that though. Their whole business just went up. In all flames. of their ideologies are are just a dog chasing its tail, anyways. A snake eating its own tail, you know. Because like this, the, in the red pill movement, 
men talk about how women should be virgins and should have a low body count, but then at the same time they talk about going really? out and fucking as many women as you possibly can. So it's like if you Oh yeah, I know that his brother has a whole course on how to get a virgin and Yeah, so if your whole priority is to go out and fuck as many women as you possibly can, but then complain because women have a high body count, what what it doesn't make any sense. That's a snake eating its tail. It makes no yeah. fucking sense. Makes well, no I, sense. I, well, I was just saying cuz like in the guy world it's kind of cornered into I don't know followers they're following not a hermit <laughs> they're following mm -hmm. some stupid person yeah. like followers of the andrew tate ideal or movement which he's just piggybacking off like you know girls gone wild or yeah. you know stuff like that of the younger days but it's like but in the women world it's like there's fucking a plethora of fucking just fuck men fuck dudes mm -hmm. fuck men Da, 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 da. And yep. that's been going on for so long now it's on both sides that you know that it's on both sides but i'm yeah. just saying that on the guy side you don't yeah not as much not a, anymore there's not, there's not a lot of dudes just like you know because it's, it's a waste of energy yeah it is it's it's and stupid so that that's, that's what's weird about the star regulus the royal star being in virgo now for the rest of our lives a feminine planet as you're seeing can women can women lead yes but they're gonna have to get over that like because now it's flopping where the men over the last fucking thousands of years, right? Were the ones who built the skyscrapers, built the, yeah. the construction. And so it's like, now it's like, no, demoralize men and then, uh oh, only bring them on when we need help. Yeah. Now we're moving into a world where we're balancing because it's been so imbalanced. Because for the longest time, yes, it was, it was the masculine, the toxic masculine that was in control. So now they think the solution to the problem is to overtake it with the toxic feminine. When we're we're moving into a world where no women are not going to fucking lead and men are not going to fucking lead. Divine masculine and divine feminine are going to come together and work together as a team balanced out for the first time in, in history. You know what I'm saying? So that this, Yeah, but yeah, well, it's a long path, yeah. Yeah. You know. I think that well, that's what we're watching right now is the hard part pain before the pleasure mm -hmm. yeah you know we'll get there but it just that i don't know why that that, that came up at the end of this sermon is like who you follow the environment you're around like pay attention to what you're watching every day because like if i was watching videos of just how to hate women all day like i wouldn't be having it i wouldn't have a daughter i wouldn't be with sophia like you know it'd be like i couldn't imagine where my life would be if that was just my life just to go well, you know who those people are. Andrew Tate's audience is a bunch of teenage virgin simps who, who can't get no pussy. Or dudes that are unhappy in their relationships. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's fucking weird. <laughs> the fact that he tried to make... <laughs> fucking... Megan Fox with a dick. <laughs> like I just can't get that out of my head. Is like yeah. people actually like look up to this guy yeah. for the most stupid like kindergarten class <laughs> of life. Like of trying to, you know, he's so smart. It's like, no, he's not. Well, didn't you see, matter of fact, I, I sent you a video and you never responded to it. The one where Oh, the response about the the about his trial yeah i did watch it yeah it was he's, very interesting because it's like his 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 um the case is public information right and nobody so, really looked it up nobody did but he tucker didn't look it up yeah that's what bothered me that's what made me think oh shit should i listen to tucker then? i know and i remember when tucker did that i went this is the dumbest mistake you're ever making in your life right now because yeah as it turns out see i was always in the middle i was on the fence thinking uh, at first, I don't really think Andrew Tate's as guilty as everybody thinks he is, but he's still a fucking idiot at the same time. I didn't realize that, oh, no, he actually is guilty of what he's being accused of. Right. He's not being accused of what he says he's being accused well, it's of. It's funny because that video you sent me is where I'm getting the whole, his, he's an Islam, his brother's a Christian, and they had yeah. the schools about teaching virgins, mm -hmm. how to get a virgin, or like all this weird shit. I didn't realize it was that. And he, yeah, they, they, he actually has openly bragged about everything that they're accusing him of. 
Yeah, like all the webcam shit they do, it's like they get on there yeah. and they make the girls with a fake keyboard. Oh, yeah. This is all from that video you sent me. And yeah. like they get on the other side and they're like, we get whatever guys, yachts, whatever, yeah. whatever, just to get fucking with this webcam girl. And then they would mm -hmm. never give them, you know. It's like I, I had to pull the keyboards away from all those girls because they just want to look pretty. They don't know how to get the fucking money. Yeah. I was just like, damn, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not the only video. There's several right. I videos. I know the way he said it, though, to Tucker was, Oh, well, I'm just getting in trouble for making TikToks yeah. and uh, asking girls to make TikToks. To, and I've never made any money on TikTok. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being accused of trying to steal money from women's TikTok accounts. TikTok. That is not. <laughs> the way he says TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what you're being accused of. And, right, yeah. and then he admits, though, that he, for, for honey potting and all that shit, but that's legitimate by, by oh, yeah, I've got money, I'll... I'll fly you out here mm -hmm. and then the lover boy, uh, lover boy. And then I'm yeah. going to fuck you. And then I'm going to put you into sex work. And that's mm -hmm. what he's done. That's what he's doing. That's exactly what he's being accused of. And he's being accused of. And that's what he's doing. Yeah. It's like, hello. So when I saw that, that made me look at Tucker like, Oh shit. That's some, now I'm not saying that I don't believe anything that Tucker says, but he was one of the few people that I would actually listen to, even though I think that he still has an agenda with some of the things and he knows more than he talks about. But then when I saw that, I'm like, oh, fuck. I think if we were to use a white hat thing, that would be a white hat thing to expose him because imagine how many men in America have done that to women where they force them to get into sex work. Yeah. If you think of like OnlyFans that has blown up, mm -hmm. how many of those women would have done it on their own? A right. lot of them are honey potted and forced to do that. Yeah. You know how many guys would be going to jail? Hmm. Yeah. It's fucked up. Like, you know, and like people don't realize it, but that's, that's what it is. Like, yeah, and then you can't leave and you have to do this. And, you, and then I'm taking, I'm making some of that money. Most of it. Yeah. They were taking 75% of the money. Or was it 50%? One of the two. 50, 75, something like that. But. And then, yeah, for, yeah, forcing them to be whatever they want them to be. Mm -hmm. It's fucking dark. It's crazy shit, but that's the fucking world we live in now. So just, pay, just be very, very careful who you listen to, who you pay attention to. Do a little bit of research. Which I'm, I'm guilty. I didn't even do the research. I didn't care about it enough. I didn't care enough about Andrew Tate to look into his shit, you know. But well, last year I was doing a show, Spiritual Daddy, with Brian, and it was right when he had gotten in trouble a lot. And I looked at his chart, and then I heard some of the stuff he was saying, and then I went, "Nope, this guy's not good." So since day one, I've always, I've never posted any of his stuff or blown him up or talked good on him once. It just like this guy's a liar neptune square's son all this shit happening i'm like this guy's gonna go through destruction and be exposed for dark shit yeah so, no. i got receipts so i'm like I'm, I'm good never fell on his train i know you didn't fall on his train either no it's like i don't know how anybody did like i said it's it's pathetic Fucking Simps. loser ass dudes. I know. Who ain't they never don't want to go through life themselves. Yeah. You only learn. Like, you learn the hard way. Like, you ask a girl out and they say no when you get rejected. It's a good lesson. It's yeah. not a bad lesson. I feel like what's funny is I, I, I don't think that Andrew Tate is smashing. I don't think he ever has. I think he's always been a loser who's been rejected that he has yeah. to go to those extremes yep he was yeah. like it showed it when he was on that reality show he got rejected you know yeah he's so. a skinny wimpy little dude and yeah and i mean so, hey shit cool whatever but yeah it's crazy shit man well that's why i, I that's why i liked seeing like uh bill maher had tommy lee on like a week or two ago on his podcast and you don't see a lot of tommy lee but tommy lee's smashed in his life and you don't see him out there bragging about it or talking about yeah. it. yeah he's just focused on his music and trying to be sober and you know 
Yeah. Like, and it was funny too, because like there was a whole that Pamela Anderson documentary last year, and it's not like he took advantage of it being talked about so much or anything. He just didn't. He just yeah. He's just doing his own thing. Because the loudest man in the room is usually the most insecure man yeah, in the room. Yeah, you know? exactly. So I thought it was hilarious to see his response to Bill Maher. Like, you're the guy that uh, has smashed everything. <laughs> you know, like, you're just uh, chilling here. Not Because, yeah, I mean, he doesn't even... when you actually are that guy, you don't need to brag about it. Right. I can remember when I saw that video of Andrew Tate where he said... Why do I post pictures on my Instagram with all these bitches? So you know who the fucking man is. Mm -hmm. So you know that I'm the man. It's like, oh, so you're just, you're admitting that all you care about is other people's opinion of you. Right. You know, uh, the, if you're really that guy, you don't need to go around bragging about it. You don't need to go around letting everybody know who the man is. You know, that that is... A, a screaming, crippling, insecure man that has to scream, I'm the man. Uh, uh, yes, the opposite of the hermit fully. Yeah. Yeah. Hermit reversed. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have any wisdom <laughs> at all. All right, everyone. Well, happy hermit life. Bye bye.